in this example, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the same step. We're going to set it equal to 0. And you guys should probably be sick of this factoring technique so far. Yeah. Now we need to go ahead and factor. The problem is, next thing we want to do is look for factoring out the GCF. But there's problem is, is sorry. So there is no GCF. We can't easily factor any common terms out. So the one thing I know in my head, though, is that a trinomial, three terms, factored, is a binomial times a binomial. Would everybody agree? Every single time we did a trinomial, we had a binomial times a binomial. So we know that it looks like this. And then we also know, since we've done this problem four times, we know the two numbers are negative 9 and positive 2, right? I mean, it's the same numbers. I'm not, I haven't changed the number. The only thing I've been changing is the x's. So we know the two numbers are there. Now, we know it can't be this, because if you were to multiply this, x times x would give you x squared. But we need to get to x to the fourth. So what do you think we should have as our power of x? Squared. squared. And guess what? Does that work? Does x squared times x squared give you x to the fourth? Yes. x squared times 2 gives you 2x. x squared times negative 9, I'm sorry. Yeah, x squared times negative 9 gives you negative 9x squared. So negative 9x squared plus 2x squared gives you negative 7x squared. Now we apply the zero product property. Zero or x squared minus 9 equals 0. x squared plus 2 equals 0. OK? Now we just go ahead and solve. Add 9, add 9. x squared equals 9. Subtract 2, subtract 2. x squared equals negative 2. Can we solve when, when we have a variable squared? We just need to take the square root. Now, if you guys remember, when you introduce the square root, do you guys remember what you have to include? The plus or minus. Plus or minus right? And that's so important because why is plus or minus so important? Because how many solutions are we supposed to have here? Four, Four right? So right now I only have two. But when I include the plus or minus, I have plus or minus three. I can't take the square root of two, but we do understand that um, that's going to be a um, complex root, so that's going to be plus or minus i square root of 2. So in my solution set, I have plus or minus 3 comma plus or minus i square root of 2. Now, let's again go and think about this. How many x-intercepts do I actually have, though? Two. I only have two x-intercepts because those are the only two real solutions, right? Those are my two imaginary solutions, so they don't actually represent the complex solutions. Does that make sense? Okay, but I still have four solutions. It still follows that point. All right. Now, I have two things 